Hi, Paul Newman here. Joanne and I get yanked around the country an awful lot, but we generally wind up back here. It's home. We live up here on the Upper East Side, along with about 200,000 other people. We all love the diversity, the sense of neighborhood, the specialty shops, the street life, the people scene, the cafe life. But all of these things that we treasure are endangered by the current zoning code for many areas of the city. Our world is changing. The towers of Midtown are moving uptown. And we have to ask ourselves whether we really want this urban barrenness. The code for the avenues east of Lexington and the major cross streets has sanctioned a glut of high rises which are gobbling up the diversity and giving nothing back to the neighborhood. These bulky and monotonous structures are muscling out shops and services which give the neighborhood streetscape its character. Another problem, the displacement of the middle class. We hate to see the book editors, art directors, writers, teachers, actors, and shopkeepers flushed out of the neighborhood. These people make the city work. When it was built, the Upper East Side followed a time-honored plan, which was coherent, symmetrical, human scale. Buildings on the avenues were five to seven stories high and maintained a consistent street wall. That was it, no arguments. Sunlight played on pedestrians, the wind was tame. And the uniformity of that code left room for the signature of our individual craftsmen. Cut to the 1980s. A building boom is on. Fifth, Madison, Park, and Lex are spared by code revision. The mid blocks are also protected. But the other avenues from third east stand to be leveled and replaced by these bulky institutional looking monsters which adversely impact on the mid blocks. In 1985 alone, 30 buildings above 20 stories were planned or under construction on the Upper East Side. On this map, the blue dots mark towers already up. The red dots are towers underway. And the orange dots show towers now allowable under current zoning. We have seen the future, and we do not care for it. Cut to the University of California at Berkeley. Solutions to urban problems are being studied in an environmental simulation lab. They have reproduced a piece of Second Avenue and taken aim at the issue of bulk. Here's a model of the existing block. Watch what happens when developers move in. One new high rise already changes the way this block looks. Here comes more allowable development and we're on our way to building a canyon. Here's another look at the situation. Watch how pieces of the sky get eaten up with each new high rise. Watch the difference again. How can we deal with this problem? One way to keep the human scale is by restricting high rises to half a block, like this. Other cities have successfully limited the frontage of new buildings. Another way is to require all new development to be built along the street line, but only five to seven stories high with the next floor set back. This setback visually separates the street facade from the upper portion of new buildings. Instead of towers looming above on canyon walls, new buildings along the avenues would appear reduced and more in keeping with the existing neighborhood. Construction within these limits can be profitable. Watch how this alternative opens the sky. Here's a model designed to study the loss of sunlight from high-rise construction. We're simulating 10 a.m. on a spring morning. Watch the shadow of just one high rise on the side streets and watch the problem intensify as more buildings are added. The shadows not only lower the temperature, chilling certain apartments in the spring and fall, they reduce the play of sunlight on the street, which invites people out of their homes to enjoy the outdoors. We can reduce shadows by requiring three planes above the first five to seven stories. One back from the street wall, the second plane from the side street, and the third plane from the rear property line. This is for the side streets and near yards. These setbacks have the additional advantage of taming the winds that sheer high rises produce. 
To meet our concern about preserving the streetscape, the builder could be required to maintain the first one or two floors as commercial space. The merchants now renting that space should have a fair chance to rent the new space. Without this requirement, look at what the community is likely to get. This building is a perfect example of why the current code needs fixing. This developer read the fine print, and he knew he could build 10 stories higher if he set his building back from the street line. So we've got what's called a plaza bonus. It's one of the chief things we oppose. The further he sets his building back, the higher he can build. This one goes up 30 stories. The newest ones go up 40 or 50 stories. 45 of these sterile plazas have been built, and very few enhance the neighborhood. Certain buildings and certain blocks retain the flavor of old Yorkville and should be preserved. Other blocks, which provide sound housing for families and for elderly, should also be protected. This will also help to put the brakes on population overload. Our transportation system is choked. Every hour is rush hour. Proposed high-rises should be reviewed for their cumulative impact on the entire east side, not just the immediate neighborhood. We know there's a housing shortage. We don't want the moon. But we do want the sun shining down on us. We want an open sky. We want a friendly wind. We want the street to remain a place to relax and watch the world go by. We want to keep window shopping, cafe life, and familiar shopkeepers. We don't want to lose the barbers, the Chinese takeouts, Korean markets, the pizza parlors that make the neighborhood work. Current zoning allows developers to bite off chunks of history and replace them with monotonous high-rises that have no relationship to the neighborhood. We have already lost a lot of time and a lot of ground. Let's not lose any more.